Bradley makes a comment here, reviewing the status of the last five recruiting classes that make up this roster, the 77th most difficult schedule in the nation. And then we see what the record is at two and three, three and four, three and yeah. four, three, three and, four. and four. Yeah, um, it is. And, you know, I bemoaned the, the player progression and development at Miami for years. And you're seeing some of that as well. Um, yes, there are players who were highly touted, who were, you know, being recruited by everybody in America. And I don't think that they are, they have developed into the kind of player that they had the potential to be when they came to Miami. Um, I also think that there's some soft mentalities in this locker room, to be perfectly honest. Um, and I mean, even with that being said though, yeah, it is on coaching. Um, it's not just on, I mean, it's, it's, it's deeper than rap. It's like, it's really systemic at this point. And again, I thought that this was maybe more countertops and, you know, repainting the cabinet faces in the kitchen kind of touch up, but this is not even a gut renovation, like down to the studs. Like this to me is we're going to raise it to the ground. This is a full tear down pour a new foundation because the house that stood here on this beautiful lot, I, I watch all the real estate, like, you know, shows and everything. Right. So like pretend, and I've seen this, like, you know, they have the million dollar listing in Los Angeles, like, okay, there's a barely 2000 square foot place in the law, in the, the Beverly Hills flats on this gigantic lot. Yeah. There are people who might want to keep it as it was and kind of, you know, touch up the antique nature, but then there's also developers who are like, no, we're going to tear that down to the ground. We're going to pour a new foundation. We're going to build it. We're going to, you know, excavate out a massive uh, basement and we're going to make this 75, you know, hundred or 10,000 square foot modern masterpiece. And that's going to take time. But after doing all, putting that investment in and all that work, now you're going to be left with something that's so incredible that you will not ever miss what once stood there. And I believe that that has to be by the way that things are going. I think that informs the fact that Mark Cristobal looks at, and the, he keeps saying, you know, there's so many things and it's not been to the standard and there's, there's a lot, and I'm not going to go down the list, but there's so many things that aren't where they need to be and weren't where they need to be. And it's been that way for so long that, yeah, he's not looking at countertops and, and kitchen cabinets. He's looking at this as a complete to the ground, to the sand, dirt, tear down, and rebuild. And it is painful going through that change right now because we are seeing the fruits of that. Um, or we're seeing, not the, we're not seeing the fruits of that. We're seeing these seeds being planted. And we need to wait a, you know, a couple mango seasons for the tree to grow and then the fruit to bloom. So a couple somewhat counters to that or just responses to that before we get to this super chat would be, you know, I posted this video. I did a comparison that's pretty easy to see between what Mike Elko is doing at Duke versus what Mario Cristobal is doing at Miami. And again, I am not making a comparison to say Mike Elko is a better head coach than Mario Cristobal. I'm not saying that this is a, a, a finished, completed work by either coach or anything like that, just throwing it out there to say this is the comparison as it stands right now between two head coaches in their first years at two programs. One is coming into a better situation from a talent perspective, if that's all you look at. Clearly, uh, counted up the total team composite ranking, I believe, was 13th for Miami and like 61 for Duke. Duke has two four stars and Miami has 44 four stars. Mike Elko's never been a head coach before in this team, regardless of where they finish the season, they're five and three right now. They're competing every week. They're playing well. They're playing capably against anybody they play. They're showing up versus Miami giving us what they've given us. Um, so the second part of that, so that's just a kind of a statement. The second part of that would be to take your housing analogy. Isn't it possible to coach up the guys that you have currently to be better football players and a more cohesive unit, especially since it wasn't like we were watching 
2021 Kansas last year or Rutgers or Illinois or fill in the blank of the worst teams in the power five, we were watching a team that was capable of beating NC state and Pitt and so forth, even with the coaching deficiencies they had, mm -hmm. they could coach up the current team while tearing down, you know, it's like they could almost kind of shut off part of the house and say, right. you know, we're, we're going to make this, uh, aesthetically pleasing to the people that are going to see this part of it while we're completely reconstructing over here. Right. We're going to get uh, Thanksgiving dinner delivered, but we have a beautiful kitchen or a living room, dining room area to hang out, you know, flat screens over here and everything while we're remodeling the kitchen. So no, no, no you don't got to go over there because we can bring the food in and get it catered and like, da, da, da. one would think, but clearly no. I mean, it's just not there now are there players who are improving absolutely you know and you can see you're starting to see mario's guys impact the game more you know i was talking about nigel e. kelly and wesley besaint you know stepping into a not starting not starting role but like starters level of snaps you know like re like you know i think he played like 38 44 snaps or something on saturday that's a good fair amount you know uh akeem mesador I mean, yeah, he was all conference at West Virginia and they were really sad to lose him, but you see why, you know, but that's a guy who's foundational, a Cam Kinchins. I know even with making some mistakes, a James Williams, I know even making some mistakes, you still see them impacting games, even as they're growing. And I mean, it's again, do not let perfect be the enemy of good or great be the enemy of good. Like, I mean, there's still things that those players, you know, you're seeing, I mean, hell, even a, a Colby Young, and that's crazy that a guy from, you know, Lackawanna Junior College just comes in and now he's the guy at receiver. You know what I mean? But as you're looking, all of those names and like a lot of the guys who are having positive, Jaleel Skinner, you know, as Will Mallory was out for a little bit and now Elijah Arroyo's out for the year. He's stepping up. So you can see the little oasis, oases in the desert of the performance of the team, right? And as you look in those places, you see, okay, a Leonard Taylor is a five-star. He would have gone anywhere. You know, everybody was recruiting him. Then, you know, you bring down um, Daryl Jackson, you know, from Tennessee. That's a portal guy. That's a, a Mario dude. So you can see these little spotlights in the darkness and the hope is that you continue the development and i know a lot of people are talking about the way that oregon is playing right now oregon is in year five of crystal ball players because the large majority of that recruiting class that are freshmen there now were recruited by crystal ball before he left and then the four years prior the you know also so that's a and i they yeah, that's, that's, they're in year five of crystal ball players. Now, yeah, they did add a couple and, you know, there's been development and da da da, da but like, again, three Pac-12 championship games, two Rose Bowl wins. You can, you can see what it is that you want to achieve. Sorry, one Rose Bowl win, two Rose Bowl appearances. Sorry, you're correct. But, or was it just one Rose Bowl appearance? Yeah. It was just one, okay, one and one. But, hey, you got there yes. once and you won it. Another, but, ma another major bowl fiesta. Okay, so yeah, two New Year's Six wins, or Rose Bowl and Fiesta. Okay, there it is. But when you ha when you stack those classes and you develop those guys consistently over time, you get there. But again, you're pretty much starting from the foundation. So we're going, you know, brick by brick, you know, nail by nail to to build it to where it needs to be.